Continuing the Desert Fathers, translations of Helen Waddell. We are in the Sayings of the Fathers, Book 8. That nothing ought to be done for show. 4. A certain Eulogius was disciple of John, the archbishop. This Eulogius was a priest and abstemious, and fasted two days at a time, and sometimes would prolong his fast for a week, and would eat not but bread and salt. And for this he had the praise of men. He came to the abbot Joseph, in the place that is called Penafus, believing that he would find still harsher abstinence with him. And the old man welcomed him with joy, and for love's sake made ready for him whatever he had. But the disciples of Herodias said, The priest eats nothing but bread and salt. So the abbot Joseph began to eat in silence, and when he had spent three days thus, and heard no sound of psalm or prayer, for the office was said in secret, they went away, nothing edified. But by the ordering of God, a mist came down, and they wandered from the road, and came back to the old man, and before they knocked at the door, they heard chanting. They waited for a long time, listening, and then knocked, and again the old man welcomed them joyfully. Now those who were with Eulogius, it being hot, took up a vessel, and gave it to him to drink. But it was river water, mixed with sea water, and he could not drink it. And, turning over these things in mind, he began to question the old man to learn from him his way of life, saying, How is it, father, that at first he did not chant, but did begin as soon as we went out, and that when I would have drunk water, I found it salt? And the old man said, Some brother hath been upset, and by mistake hath mixed sea water with it. But Eurogius went on questioning the old man, desirous to know the truth, and the old man said to him, This little chalice of wine is that which love provides, and this is for the water which the brethren regularly drink. And by these words he taught him to have discrimination in his thoughts, and purged himself of all that hath power to move the mind after the manner of men. And he became familiar with all men, and thereafter would eat whatever was set before him. He learned moreover himself to labor in secret, and he said to the old man, Verily, thine is the labor of love. Now, I don't know outside of the narrations in the Sunni tradition, but in the Sunni tradition, um, it shows that Muhammad said that you do, uh, you know, for, you know, this age, that we, I, I don't know, this was before that, I presume, but um, that we are forbidden that if we can break our fast at sunset, that we do not break our fast at sunset. Um, you know, this lengthening of fast and stuff like this, but that's how people kill themselves and people who are going to try it who really aren't up for it. Um, But, of course, that teaching goes outside of people who would accept Islam. But the, um, six. At one time there came a certain brother to the abbot Theodore of Fermat, and spent three days questioning him that he might hear some word from him. But he did not answer him, and he went away sad. Then said his disciple, Father, wherefore dost thou not talk with him? For behold, he has gone away sad. And the old man said, Believe me, if I had no speech with him, it is that he is a peddler, and would prank himself in another man's words. 7. Another brother asked the abbot Theodore, saying, Wilt thou that for some days I eat no bread? And that old man said, Thou dost well, and I myself have done the like. And the brother said to him, I would like to take some peas to the mill and make flour of them. And the abbot Theodore said to him, If thou art already for the mill, make thyself bread. And what need is there? of this quibbling. 8. 
Another brother questioned the same old man, Thabit Theodore, and began to discuss and inquire into labors, which he had not yet performed. And the old man said to him, Thou hast not yet found thy ship, nor put thy baggage in her, nor begun to sail, and art thou already in the city, whither thou hast planned to come, when thou hast first labored in that whereof thou speakest, then speak from out the thing itself. 9. Abbot Cassian said, There came a certain brother to the abbot Serapion, and the old man urged him to make the accustomed prayer, but he, declaring that he was a sinful man and unworthy of the monk's habit that he wore, would not consent. The old man would have washed his feet, and again, using the same words, he would in no way consent. The old man, however, made him eat, and began in love to counsel him, saying, My son, if thou dost wish to profit, stay in thy cell, and look to thyself, and the work of thine hands, for it will advantage thee less to travel than to sit still. But on hearing this he was angered, and his countenance altered, that he could not hide it from the old man. So the abbot Serapion said to him, But thou now thou wert now, but now thou wert saying, I am a sinful man, and accusing thyself as unfit even to live, and because I gave thee loving counsel, oughtest thou to grow so angry? If thou wouldst in truth be humble, learn to bear manfully such things as are put upon thee by another, and do not pour baleful words over thyself. And the brother hearing this did penance before the old man, and went much profited away. 10. At one time a providential judge heard of the abbot of Moses and set out into Skeet to see him. But the old man heard of his coming and got up to flee into the marsh. And the judge with his following met him and questioned him, saying, Tell me, old man, where is the cell of the abbot Moses? And he said, Why would ye seek him out? The man is a fool and a heretic. So the judge coming to the church said to the clergy, I had heard of the abbot Moses, and came to see him, but lo, we met an old man journeying into Egypt, and asked him, Where might the cell of the abbot Moses? And he said, Why do you seek him? He is a fool and a heretic. The clergy on hearing this were perturbed and said, What was this old man like who spoke thus to you of the holy man? And they said, He was an old man wearing a very ancient garment, tall and black. And they said, It is the abbot himself, because he did not wish to be seen by you. He told you these things about himself. And mightily edified, the judge went away. 11. A brother asked the abbot Athois, saying, If I go to live in a certain place, how wouldst thou have me behave there? The old man said to him, If thou dost dwell in a place, seek not to make thyself a name for this or that, saying, I do not come into the assembly of the brethren, or I do not eat this or that, for these things make thee an empty name. But thereafter thou shalt suffer annoyance, for when men hear of such, thither they run. 12. Babbit Nisteron, the elder, was walking in the desert with a certain brother, and seeing a dragon, they fled. And the brother said to him, Art thou also afraid, father? The old man replied, I am not afraid, my son. But it was expedient that I should flee at sight of the dragon, that I might not have to fly the serpent of vainglory. 17. At one time the judge of the province came to see the abbot Simeon, and he took the leather girdle that he wore and climbed into the palm tree to prune it. And when they came up, they said to him, Where is the old man who inhabits the solitude? And he answered, There is no solitary here. And when he had thus spoken, the judge departed. 18. Another time, another judge came to see him, Siwan, and the clergy that went before him said to him, Father, make thyself ready, for the judge hath heard of thee, and comes for thy blessing. And he said, I will indeed make myself ready. And he covered himself with sackcloth, and taking in his hand bread and cheese, sat down at the doorway of his cell, and began to eat. In due course the judge came with his escort, and at the sight they made a scorn of him, saying, Is this the solitary monk of whom we have heard such great things? And straight away they turned about and departed to their own place. And, of course, you know, um, cheese 
is a luxury, usually, so. 19. The Holy Syncletica said, A treasure that is known is quickly spent, and even so, any virtue that is commented on and made a public show of is destroyed, even as wax is melted before the face of fire, so is the soul enfeebled by praise and loses the toughness of its virtues. Of course, people who make their own cheese, it's not always, um, it's just something they, they, well, I mean, it's, it is still technically a luxury, but it's something that, you know, preserves itself versus just milk. Um, 22. There was a certain one that abstained from food and ate no bread. He came to one of the fathers. By chance, there came also other pilgrims. And the old man made them eat, made them a little broth. And when they sat down to eat, the abstemious brother set down for himself a pea that he had steeped and chewed it. And when they got up from the table, the old man took him aside and said to him, Brother, if thou comest to any one, do not show off to him thy way of life. If thou dost not, if thou dost wish to keep to thine own way, abide in thy cell and go nowhere out from it. And he accepted the words of the old man and made himself. Thereafter, share the common life in whatsoever fell to his lot with the brethren.